Today is chapter 3, section 4, the transformations of functions. Okay, so today is the day. Today's um, the day that everything I've said leading into, you know, um, oh, I didn't mean to do a new page. Oh, well, uh, everything I said leading into, you know, being able to graph these functions in our head, this is going to be it. Okay, this is where, where we, we learn how to graph our functions. There are a few transformations that we need to, to know, and we'll start with, well, I guess we'll start with this. All right, so the first thing we need to do before we even do any sort of transformations is to remember what those parent functions are. Those parent functions, which we covered in the last section are listed right here. All right, you need to be able to know what those are uh, like right on cue. As soon as, soon as you are, um, as soon as you see it, you need to know what they look like. Okay, if you don't, then you're going to struggle mightily the rest of this, this course. Okay, start with the first one we're gonna talk about. This says the vertical shift of a function. Okay, so excuse me, sorry. So sketch the graph of f of x is equal to the absolute value of x and g of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus two. Alright. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this real quickly. Put that over here. Right? Because we will come back to that. But that's not how we're going to be graphing functions anymore. Alrighty, so it says sketch the graph of f of x equal to the absolute value of x. We know f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Looks something like this. That's pretty nice. That's pretty good. All right. So that's what the, that's what the absolute value of x. That's what that parent function looks like. Okay. All right. Well, once we graph that, now it wants us to graph. Um, g of x, which is abs the absolute value of x plus 2. Okay, well the absolute value of x plus 2, alright, so we're going we're to put your attention over here. Alright, uh, if we plug in a negative 3, well the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. And then, you know, same thing, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. And so what, what what's, what's going to happen here is we're going to graph the points at negative 3, 5, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and and, and do that. Um, it's gonna mess up my graph just a little bit. Actually, let's let me see if I can do this. Let's see if I can. Yeah, we're we're actually just gonna do it this way, just for this page. Okay, if we were to graph that uh, the the g of x, we we see that it is the blue line here. Sorry, there's my red dot. There it goes. It's this blue line. Okay. Now, the whole point of this exercise, I believe, is to is to see the relationship that that we just built. Okay. So we know that the the red line is the absolute value of x, and the green line is the absolute value of x plus two. Okay. So the relationship that we just built here uh, appears to be that you know this this plus two took this red line and shifted it up two units. All right, and that's exactly what happened. Okay, so this is an example of a vertical shift. Now, I said that to be in this uh, example, this chart here. We are we we are now going to be beyond this chart. Okay, this chart is what what you do in high school. Okay, we're not doing charts anymore. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, figure out what transformation. That's what what what, uh, what these are called. What transformation we're going to be putting onto the graph or I'm sorry, onto the function and then graph it. Okay, so that plus two tells me that we're going to shift up to units. And of course, we're going to see that as a rigorous definition here. Okay, well, I guess I can put the front and center. So this reads, if C is a positive real number, okay, and notice where C is located, C is located at the end of the f of x, the graph of y is equal to f of x plus c 
is obtained by shifting the graph of the of y, y is equal to f of x vertically upward. Okay, so if it's a plus, we see that we're going upward. All right, and if it's a minus, we're going to be going downward. Makes sense, right? Plus up, down, um, down. Well, I'm sorry, plus up, minus down. Okay, and that's 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 the whole premise of the vertical shifts. Pretty easy to do. So let's um, let's do one. I mean, we just did one in example one, I guess. Okay, so we did do it in example one. I guess we're not going to be doing another example, but instead, let's go back and. I don't think we have to. We're going to because I said it. Okay. And again, here it is. See, uh, notice how we do indeed have that um, absolute value of x plus two. It's a plus, so we shift it up. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I guess graph it, even though it's, it's, that doesn't really tell you anything right here. Okay. Just so that uh, that graph's not uh, lonely. All right. So this is the vertical shift. Um, quick note though, right? On all of these, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go with this one. These parent functions here that that I've discussed, okay? Those parent functions. Whenever we start talking about shifting, okay, I like to call these the landmark, okay? Or a landmark. So the landmark in all of these functions are, is going to be the point zero zero, okay? That's gonna be the landmark. That's gonna be that's gonna be the point that you shift, you know, up to, you know, or or, or down to, or left for, or right for. That's going to be what we shift, right? And again, as as we do the examples, you'll you'll see a better idea of what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. So we talked about a vertical shift. So next up, we must obviously talk about a horizontal shift. And okay, let's do let's put the definition first. Okay, so the definition of our horizontal function, all right, so it reads again, if C is a positive real number, okay, so just C, you know, just any constant, basically, all right, the graph of Y is equal to F of X plus C, okay, so now we're going to do a little bit things a little differently, that a um, little, little counterintuitive, but I'll tell you how it is intuitive here in a moment, all right, so if we have a plus C, then we're going to be shifting to the left, okay, if we have a minus C, we're going to be shifting to the right. Okay, so uh, an example of this would be f of x is equal to um, x minus 3 quantity squared. Okay, so what is my parent function here? Uh, well, my parent function, let's, I'm pretty sure it might be close to the actual example actually. And it might just be easier if we did that. Yeah, let's just um, now we'll, we'll stick with this. Okay, so what's my parent function here? Well, my parent function here is going to be you know f of x is equal to x squared. Okay. Uh, hopefully you can see why that's the parent function, right? Um, this f function here is going to look just like x squared with with, with a couple with, with just a little minor difference. Okay, and that minor difference is going to be this horizontal shift. All right. Now, according to our definition here, it says that if we have a minus c, a minus some constant, then we're going to be shifting it to the right. Okay. Well, now, if we look at a coordinate plane, we know this side over here is the positive, and this side over here is a negative, right? On the vertical shift, it made sense. If we had a plus, we went up. If we had a minus, we went down. Okay. Well, it, it's, it's just a little counterintuitive now because when we have a minus C, we're going to be going to the right. Okay, well, here's why it isn't necessarily counterintuitive. Okay, well, let's look at this and let's, let's solve for zero. Okay, well, if we solve for zero, you know, is equal to zero. You know, we take the square root of both sides. We got x minus 3 is equal to 0, and we end up with x is equal to a positive 3. OK, 
okay? That is that becomes my x intercept, right? So that's why, you know, at first it doesn't it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but when, once you figure out, oh, okay, that's just a zero, that's why we shift it to the to the right three units as opposed to the left, and we see the minus sign. Okay, so hopefully um, that didn't get too confusing. I, I do know that. I, I know how I am. Uh, so let's do an example. To maybe shut me up. Okay. So first thing we want to do is we're going to draw the parent function. Sorry, if you, I don't know if you guys can hear me blowing, but I've got cat hair all over my, my screen. Okay. Alright. Alrighty, so uh, next first thing we can do is uh, determine what the parent function is. Okay, so my function here is g of x is equal to x plus 1 cubed plus 2. Okay, so my parent function here is going to be the cube function. Okay, well, what does the cube function look like? Well, the cube function, if you recall, looks something like this. Okay, so that's what my parent function looks like. And now we must, uh, now we must do our um, transformations here. Okay, now there is a an order to do my transformations, right? And we're gonna we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, I guess toward, towards the, towards the end of the, the section. All right. <clears throat> For this particular example, it's not a big deal because there's only two transformations. But anyways, uh, we see two transformations here. Right? right here, we see that we are moving to the right one unit, right? Because it's a plus. Okay. And then right here, we see that we're moving, we're, we're shifting the entire uh, uh, parent function up two units because again it's a plus okay so what we're going to do is we're going to do the horizontal shift first okay so if we took if we made a horizontal shift to the uh, right one unit again right here uh, let's do a different color right here is what i call my landmark okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shift this to the right one unit okay by shifting it to the right one unit we now have a graph that looks something like this. Okay. Well, that was the first one. That was the, the shifting to the right one unit. And then the next one is going to be shifting up two units. Okay. So my, my new landmark is right here where that arrow's pointed, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to shift it up two units. So we're going to go up two units. And now that is my new landmark. And my graph now looks something like that. It looks ridiculous. Is he frozen? Oh no. Am I frozen, anybody? Hello? Uh, okay, so I've got I've got yeses and nos. Okay, so <laughs> that's <laughs> that's funny. That's the way it goes, though, right? <laughs> All right. Um. Well, uh, j just in case, I'm going to re-explain those two lines. Okay. So as as we mentioned, the white line is my parent function. All right. And the first transformation I did was that horizontal shift, where I shifted it to the right two units. Okay. And I shifted that. Uh, the landmark that, that 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 I called right, and then after that I shifted it up two units right here. Probably should do a different color than white, huh? Up here, and that became my new landmark um, right here. And then of course we just draw the uh, the cube function right on top of it like that. Okay, and of course you're going to have way better uh, graphing utilities uh, for your homework, um, but if I recall, you, you do have to move. You do have to move the graph around, um, but pick it up from that point right there, from the point zero zero, and then shift it around that way. Okay, so those those were the easy transformations. Okay, now we're gonna get to the ones that are a little, little bit tougher, a little bit harder. 
I don't think this one's that, that difficult, though. All right, so the reflections of functions about the x-axis. All right, so this reads, if, uh, I'm sorry, not, the graph of y is equal to negative f of x is obtained by reflecting the graph of y is equal to f of x about the x-axis. Okay, so what do, what do those words mean? Well, uh, did I say x-axis? Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, so if you have the negative of the function, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to flip the parent function about the uh, x-axis. I don't really like the way they, 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 they word those. They, do it, they did it uh, last time like that, too. At least they're consistent about the horrible wording, in my opinion of horrible wording. Okay, so if you have the negative of the parent function, okay, they're going to be flipping it across the x-axis. And if you have the negative of the variable, okay, the negative of the variable, they're going to be flipping across the y-axis. Okay, so let's actually move this down a little bit, and I'll give I'll put I'll put an example in between. Actually, let me see what kind of examples we got. Yeah, we'll just put an example in between. Alrighty, so an example of reflecting about the x-axis, okay? We said if it is the, the negative of the variable, okay? I'm sorry, the negative of the function. So let's just think about a parent function, okay? So a parent function, um, uh, well, let's do absolute value of x. Right, I'm pretty sure that's not using it. Okay, good. Okay, so if we had the absolute value of, I'm sorry, the function being the negative of the absolute value of x, Now nah, let's do let's just let's just do x squared. Sorry guys, trying trying to trying to do this on the fly here. Okay. Well, then we we know that the normal function, the parent function, is looks like that, right? A parabola like this. Well, if we reflect it across the x-axis, then it's going to look more like. And let's actually change this color. So we know it looks like this, the parent function. Then if we took the negative of that function. Then we flip it across the x-axis like that. Okay, and then if we took, which actually happens to be also the y-axis because it is an even function, but we'll talk about that later. In case you're wondering, actually, let's let's talk about that. All right, so you you might be asking, okay, well, uh, I mean, it, this this is also the negative of the variable, and you, and you're right. I, that was a very poorly chosen example in hindsight. Uh, this is why I do not write textbooks. Um, but the reason why it is reflective about the, the x-axis, uh, or I'm sorry, where we can flip it across the x-axis, it's also simultaneously flipped across the y-axis, is because this is an even function. And we talked about even and odd functions on the previous section, and you really got to wrap, wrap, your, uh, wrap your head around uh, the properties of those even and odd functions to, to, really, to really see why that is. Luckily, I don't think that that actually comes into play in this course, so uh, if you don't have time for that, don't worry about it. Uh, anyways, so let's look at um, f of negative x, okay, and let's just make it a little bit easier this time so I don't have anything too much to explain, okay? So f of negative x, I'm sorry, f of x is going to be equal to the absolute value of negative x, okay? Well, we know that the parent function of the 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 uh, square root. Did I say absolute value again? We know that the parent function of the square root looks something like this, right? Right? Looks like looks like that. All right. Well, if we took the negative of, or if we took the negative variable, then it says here we flip it across the y-axis. So therefore, it's going to be going the other way. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that's that's what the next example shows. But that's just basically the, the reflections about the x-axis and the y-axis. What, what it means by the negative of the function, the negative of the variable. And you know what? Actually, let's actually go ahead and change this. Because I think this will be a better example if I did it this way. 
of x is equal to the negative of the square root of x. Okay, there. That, that I think that's better. Okay, so uh, this show this shows what the negative of the function looks like. Okay, and this shows what the negative of the variable looks like. Because I, I feel like that that gets kind of hard to, to think about. You know, what what does that mean? Well. This is a good example, right? The negative of the function, you just put a negative in front of the parent function. The negative of the variable, well, there's just a negative variable. Okay. And before I get too deep, let's actually do an example again. Alrighty. So starting with A. Okay. Let's go ahead and put our... Little, uh, it's a little, uh, whatever. No, let's make it better. It looks the exact same. Okay. So, anyways, uh, a we have g of x is equal to, and let's go ahead and write this out so I can uh, draw on it a little bit better. Negative cube root of x minus two. Okay. So we see in this particular example, it looks like we have the negative of the parent function. Okay, so that tells me we're going to be uh, flipping it across the uh, x-axis because it is a negative of the parent function. And then we also see we are, we are taking 2 away from that parent function. So what, what that tells me is there's going to be a vertical shift. Okay, so there's going to be two transformations that I'm going to be doing to this parent function. Okay, well first of all, let's go ahead and draw what the parent function is. And again, uh, the parent function looks like kind of like an S if you recall, right? Something like this. Okay. Well, my first transformation, let's actually change the color. Let's change it to blue here. Okay. So my first transformation that we're going to do here is we're going to be flipping it across the uh, x-axis. Okay. So if we flip this across the x-axis, uh, what's going to happen is, is now my, my graph is going to look something like this. Okay. Again, I just I just took that white line, okay, and I just rotated it across the x-axis, right? And then next up, we have the vertical shift down two units, okay? So what I'm gonna do is basically again, my my landmark again, and all of these is going to be uh, here right here at zero zero, okay? So I'm gonna shift it down two units, okay? And of course I didn't I didn't I didn't uh, mark off you know units here because. I know that that's, this is not going to be exact, so that's just the way it is. But anyways, we're going to be going down two units, and it's going to look something like this. Okay, and that's it. That is that is that's a. Okay, so uh, before we get too far, I did say earlier that there is a kind of like an order of operations on how you do your transformations, right? Because, you know, it's so far it seems like I'm just doing it left to right. And so far I guess I have been. Okay, um, but there is an order of transformations, and if I recall, it actually comes later in this section. Um, but I'm going to give you guys a rule of thumb here, okay? Let's, let's put it on this page here. Okay, uh, the very the very first transformation you're going to do, if available, all right, is going to be a horizontal shift. Horizontal. A horizontal shift. Okay, that's the very first one you're going to do. All right. Now there's going to be some some uh, functions where you have to do multiple uh, transformations, and we, we've seen you know. Uh, at least two, um, well not at least two, we, we've seen uh, problems where we've had to do at least two transformations, but obviously it does get a little more convoluted than that, okay? So we're just called, you know, what's called these steps right here, you know, was, uh, you know, in, right, in, in amount, okay? And then last, okay, the last step is always going to be the vertical shift. That's horrible. That looks the same. So, the first step is always going to be the horizontal shift, and then whatever is in the middle is everything else, all right? It doesn't matter what, 
I mean, it does matter what, but realistically, it doesn't. And uh, just 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 bear with me for right now, okay? And then the last step you're going to do is always going to be the vertical shift. Always uh, horizontal is always first, vertical is always last. Just remember that, and I promise you, you'll 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 get all these right. Okay. So that was that was A. So let's go ahead and jump to B. I'm going to do this the same way. We're just going to rewrite it like we did the first problem. We've got h of x is equal to the cube root of 1 minus x. Okay. So my parent function is the same. It's still going to be the cube root of x. So we're going to go ahead and, and just go ahead and make that s still. Okay. <coughs> Alrighty, so um, now we, we, we see we have two uh, different um, well, we, actually we don't probably see it immediately, but there are, there are two different uh, transformations we're going to do here. Okay, And it might be easier if I actually wrote it like this. It might be easier to see Okay, if I wrote like this, is equal to the cube root, cube root of negative x plus one. Okay, you, you could definitely see it the other way, but I feel like this way makes it just abundantly clear. Okay, what does it make abundantly clear? Well, it first of all makes abundantly clear um, that we have that horizontal shift. Okay, so we have the horizontal shift. And what colors did I use? I did blue and yellow. Okay, so uh, we have this horizontal shift. Right? And since it's a horizontal shift, that's the first thing we're going to do. Okay, but let, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. And then after that, we see that it is a negative of the variable. So that tells us we're going to be flipping it across the y-axis. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw the uh, horizontal shift. So it's plus 1. So if it's a plus 1, that moves move to the left, right? It's the opposite. So if it's a plus 1, we're going to move to the left one unit. Uh, my... Um, my landmark, right? So now it becomes something like this ish, right? Um, there. Okay. All right. That was my horizontal shift. Next, we're going to be to doing the flipping across the y axis, right? Because this is the negative of the variable. Okay. So, a negative of the variable, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this graph and I'm going to flip it across the y axis. So, it's going to look something now like. Um, maybe something like this, and uh, maybe right. The, the basically, I mean, you see, you see, hopefully, I mean, it's not terrible, guys. Um, the the blue and the yellow line are reflected. Okay, so that's all we had to do. That that is the um, the two transformations. We we did the horizontal shift first because I said always horizontal first if 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 it's available, and then. Um, vertical shift last and there is no vertical shift here so we went we went straight to the uh, the reflection across the y-axis something I didn't do is give the good drawing here and we'll just do all this new page does that work okay so I'm gonna have to delete this page I remember that. Okay. And then this one, new page. Okay. I don't know if anybody actually looks at the notes, but I try to make them nice and neat for you if you do. Okay, so. And that is solution to B. Okay. Nice, prettier solution. All right, now we're going to get to legitimately the hardest part. Okay, this this is the part that nobody likes. Um, that is just the way it is. Okay, uh, vertical stretches and compressions. And this honestly might be one where I just snip the whole thing instead of drawing out tables. Okay, we will talk about it though, obviously. Okay, so this reads, 
Now the example is, uh, asks us to use the graph of f of x equal to x squared to sketch the graph of g of x equal to 2x squared. Okay, so up to this point we had we, we, we figured out, okay, when we add or subtract to the parent function or when we add or subtract to the variable, all right, then we have our, you know, vertical and horizontal shifts. And then of course if you have a negative of, of a, of the parent function or a negative of the variable, then we have our reflections. Okay. Well, now what we're doing is we're essentially putting just like a modifier on there, right? This is a two. Is this this is a parent? The parent function is x squared, but this is a two times x squared. Okay. Well, let's um, let's look down here at the nice pretty graph. Okay. So we know a parent function looks something like this, x squared. Okay. Well, notice how, and of course, following this table here, the blue line is two x squared. Okay. So um, maybe you, you can make this assumption from here that, well, if this was a, instead of a 2, maybe if it was a 3, maybe we might pinch it in a little bit more. We might pinch it in a little bit more. Okay. What if it was a 10? Well, then we would probably pinch it in quite a bit, right? And if you made that assumption, uh, you would be correct. Okay. This is an example of a vertical stretch. Okay. So, um, can't really see me, so I'm not gonna do it. Okay, glad we had that talk. Okay, uh, but anyways, vertical stretch. If we have, if we have this number here in front, actually, we'll just, we'll, we'll, let's we'll do the rigorous definition here. Um, did it give us two? So I guess there's a continuation, even though we explained it. Wait a minute. One more. It's only talking about a stretch. Okay, so uh, this is actually going a little bit further uh, in, into into detail of, of the compression, okay? So uh, it wasn't part of the actual... Uh, problem because the problem just wanted us to use the graph of x uh, use oh, the x squared to graph 2x squared okay well what would happen if we in, d instead of doing 2x squared here we did one half x squared okay well uh, w if we plug in one half okay so notice how the uh, the red line here is my parent function x squared okay well if I if I drew a table out for one half x squared and then notice the blue line how now it's on the outside okay so on the previous on the previous example notice how my blue line right the 2x squared is on the inside and it's getting it's getting stretched okay well if we took it at a half okay a fraction then we are essentially kind of flattening it right and now instead of being on the inside of my parent function it is now on the outside, okay? This is an example of vertical compression, right? And you can see, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll know if you're doing a vertical stretch or a vertical compression because your modifier, there it is, because your modifier here is going to be greater than one Okay, so uh, let's just go ahead and start from the top, actually. All right, suppose A is a positive real number. Okay, so A is just some number. All right, the graph of Y is equal to A times the parent function. Okay, so again, this is the example here is 2 times the parent function. Okay, so A in this particular case was 2. All right, uh, is obtained multiplying each Y coordinate of Y is equal to F of X by A. Okay, so you multiplied each coordinate, in the, uh, each, each, um, y coordinate by 2, and that's how you got a vertical stretch, okay? Um, yeah, if a, is, if a is greater than 1, so if our constant is greater than 1, then we have a vertical stretch. Now, notice I said we took a half earlier, okay? h of x equal to half of uh, x squared, all right? This works for any fraction. Of course, the smaller the fraction, the more of the compression, okay? So, for instance, if this was a 1 tenth x squared then it would then it would be really really flattened like this okay
oh yeah, sorry. If z if if a is between zero and one, and again that's the fraction, okay. If a is between zero and one, then the graph of y is equal to a of f of x is vertically compressed, okay. Now, real quickly, we talked about when a is greater than one, and we talked about when a is between zero and one. And notice how it is not or equal to, not or equal to in, e in either of those cases, okay. Well, what happens if a is equal to one? Okay. Well, if a is equal to one then it just becomes the parent function, right? 1x squared is just 1. Okay. And for this definition to be super rigorous, right? we're not stepping on the toes of reflections, so we're keeping, we're, we're strictly looking at the value of a. Okay? We're, we're not looking at the negative value because if we have the negative of a, right? if it was, um, you know, well actually that's not what I want to circle, um, right here. Okay? If it was like a negative a negative two, okay. Well, we would we would look at the negative in terms of the reflection, as opposed to in terms of the vertical stretch or compression. We're just looking at the number, just strictly the number, okay. And maybe we can get us another uh, example here. Actually, that's I like this drawing. I have seen the drawings earlier, but they they weren't the animate. You really need to see the animation, and I don't guess you can see that. No, there are no animations there either. Okay, there are mine, JK. Okay, so that actually was. I feel like we should, we should talk about vertical stretches more. Okay, well, th that covers vertical stretches and compressions. All right, next up is going to be horizontal stretches and compressions. So, oh, bad news. It's not, it's not exactly the same as the vertical stretch and compression. Okay, so the hardest part about this section, mm, yeah, I mean this is definitely the hardest part of the section. All right, um, is knowing when to vertically stretch, when to vertically compress, and how you can relate that to horizontal stretches and horizontal compressions. Okay, so remember early on when we had the vertical uh, shifts and horizontal shifts. Right, the vertical shifts made sense. Right, uh, plus up, minus down. Right, and then we said the horizontal shifts don't necessarily, you know, on paper doesn't really make sense. But but once you figure out, oh, that's just the x-intercept, it does make sense. Okay, um, and how a horizontal shift was, you know, just different in that way. Well, that's how horizontal shifts, or I'm sorry, horizontal stretches and compression is going to work. They're going to be the opposite. So again, similar to how you know it's the opposite for vertical. Uh, shifts and horizontal shifts, the vertical stretches and horizontal stretches and compressions are the opposite. <sighs> okay. So, real quickly, let's go ahead and, and, and go over. Did I? Okay. Let's go ahead and go over the vertical stretch and compressions real quick. Again. Okay. So, this A, again, is just simply going to be a modifier, right? We're just multiplying um, some number by my parent function. Okay. If that number is greater than 1, okay. Then we stretch it. Okay, let's, let's see if we can do this. Let's do greater than one. Then we vertically stretch it. Right. And if if we have a between zero and one, again, that just basically means if a is a fraction, that's going to be a vertical compression. Okay. It's going to be exact opposite for horizontal stretches and compressions. Right. So if we have a being greater than one, okay. Then, for the vertical side, remember if it was greater than one, for the vertical side we 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 stretched it, right? But it's going to be the exact opposite for horizontal. It's going to be a compression, okay. And then of course the exact opposite again um, uh, for the vertical uh, the vertical compression. Uh, earlier it was a vertical compression sorry it's a vertical compression if if we if we have a as a fraction well it's going to be a horizontal stretch if a is a fraction okay now also similar to um, the vertical shift and horizontal shift remember the vertical shift we added or subtracted to the parent function okay and let's actually go back touch on that real quick Those are covered a lot, okay? So notice here in, in our vertical shifts of a function, uh, we are adding or subtracting to the parent function, 
to the parent function. Okay, and the horizontal shift we are adding or subtracting to the variable. Okay, well, luckily there there is some consistency in this world. It's the same thing there. Okay, so the vertical shift we are vertical not shift vertical stretches and compressions we are multiplying the parent function by a number okay well the horizontal stretch and compression we are multiplying the variable by a number okay and again I know it's a lot to take in I'm sorry it's just the way it is um, this is a very very full section but uh, again just just the relationship there well is there okay so let's see if we can get us an example and I can really talk through it. Okay. Alrighty, so this reads use the graph of f of x equal to x squared to sketch the graph of g of x equal to uh, that the square root of four x. I, I, I don't know. Did I say absolute value again? I'm not on my game. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and draw this real quick. Okay. So use the graph of f of x equal to the square root of x to sketch the graph of g of x equal to the square root of four x and h of x is equal to the square root of one fourth x. Okay. Alrighty. So we have to again know what our parent functions are. Well, our parent function here is the square root of x. That's pretty it's pretty easy, right? So the parent function looks something like something like this, right? Okay. All right. So let's start with uh, what we're gonna make. We're gonna put g of x. We're gonna make that in red, and h of x. We're gonna make that in blue. Okay. Well, um, starting with g of x. Right, we have g of x equal to the, at the square root of 4x. Okay, so that number, that number is greater than one. Okay, and greater than one, and it's being multiplied by the variable. So this tells me it's going to be a horizontal stretch. Okay, so if it was if it was multiplied by the parent function, then it would be four times the square root of x. That's what it looks like being multiplied by the parent function. Okay, here we're be actually being multiplied by the variable. Okay, so 4x. Okay, so since that number is greater than 1, okay, it's uh, if it was vertical, we would be stretching it, right? But it's horizontal, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite. We're going to be compressing it. Okay, so imagine, imagine we take our parent function, okay, and then we just basically, you know, we, 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 we smush the walls in. Okay, we, 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 we smush this in. We, we horizontally compress it. Okay, so if we compressed it, it would, you know, it would kind of just kind of bend in like this, wouldn't it? Okay, if you if you can imagine it, um, this that's what a horizontal compression would be, right? Right. Well, if that's what a compression is, right? By by again, just think there. Imagine there there are just two walls here, and they are they are closing in on my function, right? Imagine if this is just you know like just a, a piece of metal. We, we, we would smush it in and it would look something like that red line um, here. Okay. Well, the opposite for the h of x function here, uh, h of x equal to the square root of one fourth x, right, would be instead of uh, compressing it, we're going to be stretching it. Okay. So imagine if we took this white line here, okay, and then you know we, we, we tied a little string here and we tied a string here. And we just pulled, all right. We stretched it, okay. Well, if we stretched it, then it would look something like like this, right? Because we are uh, horizontally stretching it, right? And for you patriots out there, it's nice red, white, and blue, right? So that is the gist of uh, the horizontal stretching and compressing. And I think that's pretty good, but. As always, I will also give you this nice, pretty graph there. Okay, and I'm pretty sure these next examples 
Oh, I guess that wasn't all of it, was it? Well, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, this looks like the stretch. Ah, uh, yeah, I see now. Yeah, so the 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 left one is my uh, horizontal compression, and the right one is my horizontal stretch. All right, just nice and neat. Ah, okay, this is this is where we do have an order of operation. Okay, and I don't know. I mean, I, it, it comes a little late, but that's okay. So. Good news, I'm telling you, the thing that I wrote earlier, horizontal shift always first, vertical shift always last. If you just remember that, you, you really don't really care about this, um, just in all honesty, okay? Just make sure horizontal shift is first, and then doesn't matter what you do in the middle, and vertical shift is last, okay? Um, I've never had that not work, just, just so you know. Um, let's see. I, I have uh, in the past, um, because my, my classes are longer, there's a lot more dialogue in classes. Uh, I've, if you guys remember, I, I talked about um, study tips. Um, I don't know if you, any of you have actually done that yet, but you know, looking up study tips. Uh, what, one of the mo more popular ones are mnemonic devices. And so what I would do with the class is I would sit in uh, and, and we, we would come up with a, with a six word sentence, right? Going H H R V R V. H H R V. R V R V, and then we, we we would just make a sentence out of that, right? A, a mnemonic device. But again, like I said, um, it's not necessarily needed. One moment, right? So it's not necessarily needed, but yeah, always horizontal first and vertical last, and you're gonna be a okay. And if you wanna make a mnemonic device, go for it. Okay, so I just want to see what what we had here. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's what we're on. Nice. Okay, so this uh, man, this this example looks gnarly. Okay, so in the past, if you were asked to graph this function, okay, and again you. You are probably going to be tempted to, but don't do this, okay? Make an XY chart, all right? Plug in some X value and get a Y value out. Plug in some X value, get a Y value out, and move on from there, okay? The reason why we're not doing that anymore is because, A, uh, anybody can do that, right? That's, that's like introductory into, into, into algebra, right? Uh, anybody can do that. But, B, doing our transformations, we, we can actually do a lot faster, Okay, and the more you do it, the faster you get, you know, kind of like everything, right? Okay, so first of all, we need to, we need to determine what is my parent function? Well, my parent function, all right, it's, it's a little lost in there, but hopefully, ooh, but hopefully you can tell that it is x squared, okay? I mean, there, there, there are tr transformations being, being placed upon it, but it is x squared, Okay, so let's go ahead and draw my trend or draw my parent function first. Okay, it's probably a little more sharp than that, but that's fine. All right, so that's my parent function. All right, so let's um let's do it this way. The first thing we're going to do, or it appears, uh, we do have an, we do indeed have a horizontal shift. Okay, because we are adding to the variable. Okay, so I'm going to put horizontal. H S horizontal shift. It looks like we're going to be shifting to the left three units. Okay, that's going to be transformation number one. Okay, transformation number two. Okay, well, uh, it looks like we have, uh, we, we have we have we have a couple we we can deal with. All right. Well, first of all, we, we do we do see that we have a um, a vertical shift down one. Okay, so but again, that's last. So let's leave that alone. Uh, it looks like we have, you know, we, we are multiplying my parent function 
by some number. Okay, that number happens to be uh, greater than one, so therefore we're going to be doing a you know a, a vertical stretch, right? Because I'm multiplying the parent function by a number that's greater than one, so it's going to be a vertical stretch. We also have this negative out here, which tells me it's going to be the negative of the parent function, which is going to be a reflection about the x-axis. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so I have enough colors. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, um, again, just pick one. It doesn't matter. I really don't think it matters. Um, so we're, we're going to go ahead and make this a uh, reflection. Uh, reflection. Oh. About the x-axis. Okay. All right, the third one, we're going to have a vertical stretch. Okay, and then the last uh, transformation that we do is going to be a, let's do vertical stretch. And the last one's going to be a vertical shift. Okay, so let's, let's, let's get to it, okay? So again, I said, you know, in, all, in every one of these, we have that landmark here at zero zero. Okay, so we're going to be sh making a horizontal shift to the left three units. So again, we're just kind of eyeballing this, right? Uh, make make that vertical shift to the left three units. It's going to look something like that, yeah. like that. Okay. The next, we're going to have a reflection about the x-axis. So let's go ahead and do that. So reflection about the x-axis, and of course, I'm color coordinating this for you. For your viewing pleasure. Okay, so red with red, blue with blue. Next, we're going to have a vertical stretch. Okay, so the vertical stretch is going to be, you know, something like this, right? We're still going to have that X. Uh, let's see, try this again. Close enough. Okay, and then we're going to have that vertical shift, and we're going to be going, uh, oh, I got meant to do this, uh, down. One. Okay. So next, we're gonna have that vertical shift down one unit, and it's gonna look something like this. Okay. So the green, we're we're, we're going from the white, and then we get to the green. All right. And believe it or not, believe it or not, that is a lot faster than, than than making the table and then figuring out from there. And of course, you know, all the all the colors I feel like might 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 kind of get in the way. Uh, but but hopefully hopefully you, you you see the thought process right all these colors here are mainly just for thought process well that's it we we, we took that parent function drawn in the white we did the horizontal shift in the red we did the reflection about the x-axis in the blue we did the vertical shift I'm sorry the vertical stretch in the yellow and then the vertical shift in the green and that's it and uh, again I don't know about you guys but to me to me that's just that's 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 a lot more fun of mathematics than, than mindless computation. Okay. And then I'm pretty sure this is the last example. It's a three parter. Uh, new page. Okay, so uh, this is the our our parent function here is just uh, this. Okay, so so we're given that as a as a parent function, and we are we are asked to do these transformations on that on that parent function. Okay, so uh, starting with the first one, we see that <coughs> we have two transformations here. Okay, uh, we are taking the negative of the function. So by taking the negative function, we know that we're going to be take we're going to be reflecting across the x-axis. We also have a horizontal. Um, Compression, sorry, horizontal compression because we're multiplying the variable by some number. Okay, so let's see, what, what would be um, can't remember how it is before, but I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna make this larger and I'm gonna draw on the draw on there. Just see what happens, okay? And we'll do it in. We'll do it in. Will green show up? Maybe make it thicker. Oh, something happened. Oh, I can't draw on the picture. Okay, 
Dios, a ver qué. Okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, green, I think green shows up. I just don't want to do red because, you know, the original picture is red. Anyways, here we go. So, uh, we, we're going to be taking it, uh, again, we're reflecting it across the x-axis because it is a negative of the function. So, if we flip it across the x-axis, it's going to look something like this. Okay, that's what it looks like flipped across the x-axis. And then we're going to compress it by, uh, I'm sorry, uh, vertical, yeah, compress it by a factor of 2. So it's going to look something like like this. Okay. Um, that's it. There, well, that's it. Uh, that's that's the <laughs> transformation there. And again, they, this it's not exact because we, we don't we don't know the values of the, of these uh, particular uh, this particular function. I guess we do. We would multiply it by two. But that is the uh, that's a. And I'm gonna have to erase it. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to erase it so it doesn't get all in the way. All right, B. Okay, so B we have us a horizontal shift. Okay, well, that's gonna be first. We are multiplying the parent function by a number greater than one, so that's going to be a vertical stretch. And then we have, and then we're going to make it a vertical shift down one. Okay. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and make that horizontal shift looks like to the right three units. Okay. Now I said with our parent functions, we had that landmark. We know exactly how to move, move the landmark. Okay. Um, in this particular example, we have to move each one of these pieces to the to the right three units. Okay. So we're going to go one, two, three. All right, so it looks like this, and then it looks like we go up through here, and it looks something like that, I guess. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Yeah. So it would, it would go down like this. Okay. All right. So that is my horizontal shift to the right three units. Okay. And uh, like I said, we are going to be taking, we're going to be making a um, <coughs> a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So, so what we're going to do basically just take these legs. Back, back, back. Then we're just going to um, make it a vertical stretch by a factor of two. And then we're going to shift it down one unit. So this is this is awful. I'm sorry. Let's see. We'll shift it down one unit. So it's going to look something like, like this. Okay. Does that make sense? One, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. That's it. All right. That is the transformation of B. Okay. And then lastly, la oh, this last one looks horrible. Okay. So first things first, looks like we have us a, okay. So again, if, um, we are, we are, since we are adding two to the variable, so that means we're going to make, be making a horizontal shift. Okay. Uh, we also have the negative of the variable. So the negative of the variable means we're going to be reflecting across the y-axis. We're also uh, taking the negative of the function, which tells me we're going to be flipping across the uh, x-axis. We are multiplying the parent function here by a number between 0 and 1, so by a fraction. So we're going to be doing a vertical compression. And then lastly, we have the uh, vertical... Um, uh, I can't think of the word right now. Shift, the vertical shift, up three units. And holy cow, that is that is a lot. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna get lost right here in our heads right now. But we're gonna do it anyways. Okay. So like I said, the first thing we're gonna do is that horizontal shift. Okay. So it's a plus two, right? So what that means is if it's a plus two, we're gonna go to the left two units. Okay. So it's gonna look something like like this. Let's see, let's make that a little prettier here. Okay, so that's my horizontal shift. 
Okay. Uh, next, we're going to be we have as a negative variable, so we're going to be flipping it across the y-axis. Okay. So if we flip this across the y-axis, all right, just imagine taking this graph and again just kind of flipping across the y-axis. So it's going to look something like, and I'm I'm actually going to do this in red so I don't get lost. Uh, it looks like we flip it this way. Oh, pfft, it's the exact same. <laughs> All right, so it's the exact same uh, function when I flip it across the y-axis as well. All right, so that's flipping across the y-axis. Next, we're going to have a um, a vertical compression. Okay, so the vertical compression, what's what's going to happen here is we're going to kind of just just flatten this out just a little bit like this. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, next up, looks like we're going to have a reflection about the uh, the x-axis. Okay, so that's that's nice. So that's actually pretty easy to, to do, isn't it? So we're going down, down to so something like something like this. I know I erase that top part. Right. And then lastly, we're going to be making a uh, a vertical shift up three units. So one, two, three. So it's going to look something like this in the end. Oh, something like. Like this in the end. Okay, that was a lot of transformation. I'm pretty sure that that touched on every single transformation too. So that's that's nice and and, and handy. Okay, um, and like I said, I'm pretty sure that's the last example. I, I, will, I will look, but gosh, I hope it doesn't get any worse than that. Oh, of course there is, the piecewise. Okay, so we do have another example. Sorry. Hopefully you didn't get your hopes up. Uh, maybe, maybe we should include what's being said there. Alrighty, so this reads, in section 3.3 .3, we learned that a piecewise function is a function that is defined by more than one rule. In example eight, our example now, a piecewise function is defined by two rules. Okay, each rule requires the use of transformations to sketch the graph. Okay, so that's that's actually pretty fun. I, I say fun. It, again, it's uh, fun. Fun is relative, like to to whoever whoever's speaking, isn't it? I would just rather do this than than you know factor my brains out. All right. So, anyways, um, let's go ahead and what we're going to denote the the top function as we're going to note it in red and the bottom one in blue and of course if you remember these piecewise functions that they're like they're, again they're cheating right they they are more than one function in a function okay so in the red what is my parent function here well my parent function is the absolute value of x right okay well that's Pretty easy, all right. But there are two transformations being put on this, right? The first one, all right, is the horizontal shift. So we're gonna be shifting it to the left two units. So it's gonna look something like this, okay. And then we have the negative of the parent function, which tells me we're gonna be shifting, or yeah, which tells me we're gonna be reflecting it across the x-axis. So it's gonna look something like this, okay. Now we have to deal with that domain, all right? So what is my domain? Well, my domain here is the uh, is, is for all values of x that are less than, and again, it's strictly less than, strictly less than negative one. Of course, I didn't actually make um, little tick marks, but we'll just put one right here. All right, so I I will erase everything that is greater than one. Looks like we might. Okay, so again, little, little, little minute movements are definitely not my pen or this computer's forte. So uh, this looks pretty good, actually, though. Anyways, oh, well, it's, it ceased to look good. That looks good. Okay. So uh, that is the red graph, or red being up here, right? All right. Next, we're going to look at the uh, square root of x plus 1. Okay, so again, the parent function of of the, the second equation is the square, uh, the square root. So, you know, we know it looks like that. Okay, well, whew, thankfully, there's only one transformation here. And we see that it is, you know, a, 
excuse me, it is a plus one. So if it's plus one, I'm adding one to the variable. That means we're going to be making a horizontal shift to the left one unit. It's going to look something like that. My elbow slipped. Right. I was always told, don't put your elbow on a table when you when you teach math class. Anyways, uh, we see that it is. Uh, the domain here is for all values of x that are greater than or equal to negative 1. So I can make, I can put a closed circle there. Alright, and that's that. And that's a, that's such a good drawing. I'm actually not even going to give you guys the official one. No, I will, just in case. Just in case. There. Yeah, we're good. We're good. This is easy. Um, that, that's how we do piecewise functions. Again, piecewise functions are cheating. They're, they're, they're multiple functions in one. All right. Now, I'm pretty sure that that does conclude today. I think I have to just snip that. Okay, yeah. Well, today, man, we are, we went... We covered a lot of stuff today. Okay, and again, this is just the summary of the transformation that we talked about. All right, and that concludes today's lesson.